And welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video. Wanted to talk about the Vectrex, haven't done so for a while. And uh, this is actually, um, uh, this came up for me because there's a fellow, a YouTuber that I watch. Uh, he's out of Scotland. Uh, he goes under the handle of Mainmeister. And uh, he has an excellent channel where he covers all kinds of video games of different eras. Uh, he's in my age group, so uh, he remembers the pre-NES era. And he talks about games from all kinds of different decades, and uh, he loves the Vectrex. Um, he also does a thing that's kind of a follow-up. Uh, there's a British YouTuber by the name of Steve Benway, who used to traditionally have what he called uh, the, um, the Friday Talkie, where every Friday night he would sit down and just discuss his musings of the gaming world uh, for the week. But um, Steve's been very busy lately. He's, uh, I think he's doing a course, so... Um, Mainmeister has decided to take up the uh, gauntlet and continue the Friday discussion uh, topic. And his is called the Friday Waffle, because he tends to just waffle on about different subjects, which is great. I really love watching him. I've been watching him for a long time now. And uh, he mentioned in the most recent uh, episode from last week, and I'll put a link uh, specifically to that video down below, plus um, another one just to uh, Mainmeister's channel, channel in general, um, but he was talking about uh, the Vectrex and what classic game would he like to see be released on it. He mentioned he'd like to see a proper version of Asteroids released for the Vectrex. And um, there are a few. I wanted to actually bring up uh, three different examples of what exists on the Vectrex. But I also wanted to discuss why I don't think it's actually possible to fully emulate the original Coin-Op Classic. Now, uh, the first example of this is going to be uh, from a 1996 collection here by John Donzilla. Uh, he had a, a collection of games that he called All Good Things, and it's, um, I think, four different games? Can't remember. Uh, but among them, he, he had a thing on here called Rockeroids, and Rockeroids was originally released as a limited edition game, and then in 1996, John put it onto this cartridge, uh, called All Good Things. So let me just bring up Rockeroids here. And this is a pretty good version of the Asteroids game. Now let me just uh, fire it up here. You only use the buttons in classic Asteroids style. You don't use the joystick at all. You can see it's it's actually a really, it looks a lot like Asteroids. It's a really good rendition. So you've got the UFO, so that's great. And uh, plays really, really well. And it looks great. I mean, anybody who's got a Vectrex knows that that signature glow that Vector titles have. And this one has it in spades. It's got that glow. I mean, there's just something about playing Asteroids on a Vector monitor. It just looks fantastic. It's the, it's really the only way to play it. I mean, I've, I've played Asteroids in various collections on, uh, Raster. Let's see, we got the small one. Oh, I'm dead. Uh, I've played Asteroids on various, uh, Raster collections, you know, with, uh, uh, PlayStation 1, Game Boy, DS, you name it. I've, I've played different versions of Asteroids, and they're, they're very good, a lot of them, but nothing can compare to the actual vector graphic. You just need that glow. It just, it has something magical about it. Now, as I get to the third level here, you're going to see why I don't think a proper version of Asteroids is possible on the Vectrex. Because we're getting to the point where there's a lot of rocks on screen. See what happens now as I start to shoot these. I don't know if you noticed it there, but as the Vectrex starts to get... Um... Darn it, I died. As the Vectrex has to keep track of more and more rocks on screen, which is part of the, um, the Asteroids gameplay, it starts to chug. And uh, let's just see... Okay, let's see what happens on this level. Yeah, you can see now it's really starting to slow down a lot, and I, I've noticed that with most uh, proper renditions of asteroids, or actually of, of Rockeroids, as John created. Oh, well, there we go, I'm dead. So that's Rockeroids, the first version of the game. And uh, yeah, you can see it just started to get really, really slow there. So I just don't think it's possible. 
Uh, now I'm going to switch to Mindstorm, which comes built in with the Vectrex. And I just want to use it as an example of how the designers of the Vectrex kind of worked around that limitation with the Vectrex's uh, CPU cycles. So as you can see, I've just turned on my Vectrex. And here is the built-in game Mindstorm from 1982. It's essentially still Asteroids gameplay, but I think what the designers of this game decided was instead of dealing with the limitations of the fact that the Vectrex can only handle so many items on screen at once, we'll have this uh, mine layer drop down, whatever that is, 20 odd items, and we'll only have them appear gradually in time for the player to destroy each one. So you never really get a lot of stuff on screen. Um, unlike the asteroids, these alien ships, or these crystals, whatever they are, the mines, do not actually break up into smaller pieces and start to flood the screen. They actually... You're clearing the screen as you go on. So the designers of uh, Mindstorm were actually clever. They, they came up with an asteroids type of a game but it's only got a finite number of items or objects on screen, so you're never really going to get that slowdown. They run into other items. Uh, they, they create variations of the enemy where some of them come straight toward you, like those square ones. There you go. Just, just beelining straight for me. There's another one. Um, and, you know, they, they, they mix it up. They certainly um, come up with a great game. I love Mindstorm. But it's... It's never going to slow down because they, they knew that the Vectrex could only handle so many items or so many objects on screen at once. So that's what you ended up with as a solution to the Asteroids problem. And unfortunately, this is the best version of Asteroids that I think is probably possible. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. If anybody's a, a big-time developer for Vectrex games, let me know. Now I'll just show you one other version of Rockeroids, a third version, which is much closer to what Asteroids was a lot like originally. Now this is actually the Sean Kelly Multicart uh, version 2 that I have installed in the Vectrex now. Got this at a show recently and uh, it's fantastic. It's got all the games of the original release and a few homebrews on here, including uh, further down this list here, Rockeroids Deluxe, also known as Rockeroids Third Rock. I think this was uh, John Donzilla's third version of this game. I'll show you what it's like. It's a lot closer to, actually, Asteroids Deluxe. Your ship looks a little different, and you're smaller, and it's uh, much more challenging. Uh, but again, we run into that slowdown problem, and I'll show you here. So again, great with the glow that we're all used to for an Asteroids game. And again, we got the little bad guy rocket ship, or UFO. Great little game, but as you're going to see in a level or two, we've got the same slowdown problem again. And it gets really noticeable in this one. You'll even notice the UFO sounds a little sickly as it, uh, as the Vectrex tries to compile all the information of all those different rocks and also just play the sound. There we go. You can see my shots are slowing down, like this isn't in any way messing with the video. This is actually how it plays on the Vectrex. It's, it's just slow. It, the poor machine just can't hold on to all the information of all those different rocks and things to keep track of. What do you see on this level? You notice how initially those rocks are flying along at really high speed? 
Look at how slow they're moving now. Like that's that's just the Vectrex trying its best to, to keep up with all that information. So yeah, I have a feeling the Vectrex just can't handle all that information at once. I, the, the problem with asteroids is the very design of the game is such that um, you shoot the rocks and they break into smaller rocks. And uh, Mindstorm took care of that by having a finite number of mines on screen, but with asteroids, uh, you're kind of forced to, to deal with that original game design. What do you see this level? It's like playing in molasses. Yeah, you could hear badly there how the UFO was struggling. And unfortunately, the Vectrex, I just don't think it can do it. I don't think the Vectrex can handle uh, a proper Asteroids game. I just think there's way too many particles there for the little CPU to try and keep on top of. I could be wrong, I'm not a game programmer, so um, I, I really don't have any um, uh, authority to say that, just it's been my observation as I've played these three different Asteroids-esque games. Now there's a fourth one I have here, but I can't actually play it yet, and I'm actually saving it for another video I'm planning on doing on my channel here. Uh, it's uh, Mindstorm, which you've already seen, but the 3D version, and I do have the 3D imager. Uh, that needs its own video though. Um, it's another case though, similar to regular Mindstorm, where it's this finite number of enemies on the screen, something that the Vectrex can handle. Now I know there's a couple of experts for the Vectrex who watch my channel a lot. Uh, Vectrex Roly, if you're watching, maybe you can uh, let me know, am I wrong? Is, is the Vectrex actually capable of handling asteroids and just nobody's cracked the code? Regardless, I, I think it's a fantastic game that should work on the Vectrex. I, I agree with Mainmeister. I really wish this was possible. I just don't think it can do it. I think there's far too many particles. Stick with Mindstorm, at least for playing on the Vectrex. Anyway, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.